Father Michael Judge was a chaplain for the New York City Fire Department who gave his life during the 9-11 attacks. Robert Emmett Michael Judge was the son of Irish Catholic immigrants from County Leitrim and grew up in Brooklyn, New York during the Great Depression. In 1948, at the age of 15, Judge began the formation process to enter the Franciscan community. He completed his training and was ordained a Franciscan priest in 1961. In 1986, he was assigned to the Monastery of St. Francis of Assisi Church on West 31st Street in New York, where he lived and worked until his death. We're now going to watch a video created in the last several weeks specifically for Father Judge's induction into the Irish American Hall of Fame. The video was produced by Michael Goldman, a dear friend of Father Judge's, with the help of many wonderful people from the city of New York. Let's hear more about the life of Father Michael Judge. Father Michael Judge was my close friend, for sure. He was a confidant and he was my spiritual advisor. A couple of times when I was mayor, I had um, some difficulties in my marriage. And, and I remember on at least three occasions coming home to Gracie Mansion, he'd go through a guard gate and they'd stop me and there'd be a little note. I'd get the note, it'd be about 10, 11 o'clock at night. I'd open the note up, it'd be from Father Judge. And the, the substance of the note would be, um, I know you're feeling terrible, and I know you're feeling very guilty for what you did, because I know you. Um, but um, remember, Jesus uh, saw you at the bedside of, then he'd mentioned two or three firefighters that recently we had been with who had either died or been seriously injured. And that'll count. And you're a good man. And then we had a joke. Every time I would see him, I would say, Father Judge, uh, pray for me. Say a prayer for me. He said, you know, I will, but it'd be much better if you did, because it'd be much more unusual. It would get God's attention if you, <laughs> if you prayed. And he said it would be also good if you prayed a couple of times and didn't ask for help. Good morning, everyone. May the grace of God the Father, peace from God the Son, join in fellowship from the Holy Spirit be with you all. We often had masses, Catholic masses, in the firehouses to celebrate the year's uh, anniversary of a firefighter's death or for some other ceremony. And he would say, Every, anyone who has not been to confession or who would like absolution, bow your head because I would really like you to go to Holy Communion today. Bow your head and they would give everybody this blessing. This is a blessed place because God's work is being done from this house and in this house. Well, the first time he did it, I said to him, can you do that? He said, no, I'm not supposed to do that, but it's a great way to get everybody who hasn't been back at confession to come back to church. And I thought, what a great way to, to get a bunch of big, rough, tough guys who maybe haven't had the sacrament in a long time to get them back to church. He told it like it was. He told the truth and his foremost mission was to be a Franciscan and to live the St. Francis prayer. If you grow in that desire to be closer to God and to be Franciscan, which is Christ-like, and St. Francis loved everyone and, you know, took poverty over wanting anything for yourself, you chose poverty or obedience. And I think he brought that to everyone, forgiveness, great deal of love, he always looked for the people that were most in need. I'd throw these big parties on the Intrepid and I'd call him and I'd say, Michael, we're having a big party Friday night. Come to the Intrepid. You'll have a blast. There's, you know, tons of food and everything to drink. And he'd say to me, oh, Kathy, thank you for the invitation. I just can't come. I'm counseling 26 alcoholics on Friday. <laughs> I'm like, oh. Just bring them with you. There'll be 600 more on the boat. And he thought that was the funniest. He just loved that. that very funny. He could talk to our guys who had drinking problems because he was an alcoholic. 
He talked to our guys with drug problems. He talked to our guys with marital problems. He talked to men that were gay and keeping it a secret in the fire department. He could talk to anybody about anything. Every time I saw him, I would call him a babe magnet because you'd walk up to him and he was so good looking, he'd be surrounded by women. And I'd say, if they only knew, and he would laugh, and I'd say, you want a glass of wine? And he said, why do you do that to me? He said, every day I wish I had a drink, but every day I know I can't have one. Good days, bad days. Up days, down days. Sad days, happy days. But never a boring day on this job. You do what God has called you to do. You show up, you put one foot in front of another, you get on the rig, and you go out, you do the job, which is a mystery and a surprise. You have no idea when you get on that rig, no matter how big the call, no matter how small, you have no idea what God's calling you to. In 1998, my husband, Timmy Stackpole, was severely injured in a building collapse. And at some point in the evening, he was being transferred from one hospital into the city to the burn center. Michael Judge jumped in the ambulance with him as chaplain of the fire department. Timmy was in a lot of pain and it was very serious injuries and two other firefighters had perished in that fire. Father Michael got in the ambulance and started to pray with Timmy. And Timmy was a very faithful person, so of course he would pray. But as the story goes, somewhere along the line, I guess he was in so much pain, he asked Father Michael if he could be quiet so he could say his own prayers. <laughs> and uh, anybody that knows him, that knows Michael Judge, I don't think anybody's ever told him to be quiet, you know? So they formed an instant friendship at that moment. And really, Michael Judge stepping into that ambulance stepped into our lives. We love the job, we all do. What a blessing that is. A typical, typical job, and God calls you to it, and then he gives you a love for it so that a difficult job will be well done. He's someone who everyone wanted a piece of him. And, and, and the way that he was present to people, um, everyone kind of thought that he was really their best friend. And so when Michael, Michael uh, Duffy was preaching the homily at his funeral mass, uh, he said, now, uh, there are thousands of you here hundreds of you here who believe that uh, Michael Judge is your best friend. Well, I want you to meet the 3,000 other best friends of Michael Judge. Just turn around and say hello to the people next to you. This was Michael's home base. This firehouse known as Midtown Med. So everything Michael did in the fire department was from this house. He would go forth from here and come back here to the brothers. Life, life and death, so valuable. And you wonder when my last half hour is going to be, or my last hour, what it'll be. Will it be doing something for someone, trying to save a life? That's why he is so greatly loved and why every day in New York City for these past 16 years, uh, his name is mentioned every day. I miss him today. There are times in the years that he's been gone where I, I face, you know, questions or issues or What's the right thing to do? How, what's the right way to handle it? Um, I wish I had him around. A lot of the pictures, the, all the art that came out of it, a lot of it was him standing at the gates of heaven and all the firefighters coming after him, with him being the first guy to go and welcome everybody to heaven. People have learned of, of him through the stories after 9-11, and I think he's still changing lives. You know, they often refer to him as the saint, Saint Michael. And certainly, I can't think of a better person that walked the walk and would be a better example as a saint. But boy, would he hate that. He would hate that because he would hate being put on that pedestal. He would laugh if he were here and he heard any of us saying that, he would laugh. Ladies and gentlemen, we are honored to induct Father Michael Judge into the 2017 Irish American Hall of Fame for his contributions to the field of religion. Accepting the award for Father Judge are his niece, Lorraine Jessick, and cousin Eileen Judge, 
We would also like to welcome the family members of Father Judge from Boston and Ireland who have traveled here to witness this honor, as well as friars Michael Duffy and Ronald Pesci, and of course Michael Goldman who produced the video and who is also here tonight to video this entire gala. Thank you, Michael, for your time and your extraordinary talents. Ladies, I give it to you. I want to thank the Irish American Hall of Fame for the honor of accepting this award on behalf of Father Michael Judge. Father Michael was my uncle, and as you can see, he was very special. He was really a saint to me and a true gift from heaven. He officiated my brother's wedding, and he did save my grandmother's life. One Thanksgiving, she had forgotten to eat due to dementia and collapsed. He came to visit her at Thanksgiving like he always did in East Patterson, New Jersey, and he found her and he saved her. He guided and comforted so many with his spirit and his prayers, including me, and I'd say he had a great Irish work ethic when it came to putting things in God's hands. With that, I want to introduce his cousin Eileen Judge, who flew here from Ireland, and her sister Frances Healy, um, to share their story and who can speak to his Irish essence. Thank you. Well, firstly, let me say how privileged I am to be present at this very unique occasion. Father Michael's parents both emigrated from County Leitrim to New York. They met on the boat going over to New York and married soon after that. His father never saw Ireland again. Francis and I were born in Ireland, so we never knew Father Michael, Aaron, or Dimna as children. These names were like names in a storybook, not real people at all because we never saw them while we were children. Emmett was named after the Irish patriot Robert Emmett. His twin sister was named Dimna after Saint Dimna, an Irish saint. And there's no need to say where the name Aaron came from. Emmett took the name Michael on his ordination. This was in memory of his father, Michael, our father's brother. Michael died in 1939, 10 years before my father. And um, his father's early death meant that Emmett and his sisters experienced poverty as children. This experience must have been the reason why, in later life, he empathized so sincerely with the poor and their needs. My earliest memory of Father Michael was in 1965, my first visit to America. I remember the World Fair taking place in New York City. Frances, my sister, was now working in Boston and we were able to visit the World Fair and join Father Michael's mother for dinner that evening at her home. She arranged to have Father Michael there also. It was lovely because Michael was so entertaining and such good company. We met him again some years later on 39th Street we went out to dinner with him. While walking from the monastery to the restaurant, we encountered several poor men on the street. Michael addressed all of them by name, and they addressed him likewise. We really enjoyed that day and laughed a lot. Father Michael sh showed us to his room and took the phone off the hook, so we were able to chat for hours about family and Ireland. I remember 9-11. I was out somewhere when I heard the news of it. I recall saying to whoever I was with, my cousin is the ch a chaplain in the New York Fire Brigade, so I hope he isn't on duty today. Unfortunately, he was on duty and took his duties and responsibilities very seriously. We lost a wonderful cousin and America lost a great man. As they say in Irish, or yes, Jagorawa Anam Jilish, translated, may his faithful soul be at God's right hand. Finally, let me end in Father Michael's own words. Lord, take me where you want me to go. 
let me meet who you want me to meet. Tell me what you want me to say and keep me out of your way. Amen. Thank you for all for being here. Can we go down? Thank you, Ellie. That was beautiful. Oh. Thank you again, Lorraine and Eileen and the whole family. We appreciate that.